Hi guys, um, I'm back with a long-awaited tutorial video, um, so we'll get right to it. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about carving your own stamps. Um, I love to carve my own stamps. I love to be able to create whatever image I want and, um, you know, for use in my art journal. You can personalize them, you know, you've some of you have seen this um, stamp that I have that I carved of a picture of myself. So very fun, very easy to do. I find it very relaxing. So first I start with some examples of, of things that I've carved. Um, you know, I carved this little swirl recently. Uh, it's not perfect. You can see where the line goes thin and thick and, it, you know, but it, it looks really good when it's stamped. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I've also carved out of regular erasers a Eiffel Tower. This this does do when you actually stamp it. I got some uh, B and a little glasses. I carved this really cute um, cassette tape, and on the back I have a flower at the border. And what's good about this this rubber? It's thick enough, and you can buy even thicker than this. This is Speedball Speedy Stamp Rubber. Um, you can buy it at Michaels or your art store. And. Uh, Sorry, my, my battery flashlight, my battery's flashing, so hopefully it'll last 10 minutes. Anyways, um, you can buy it at your Michaels or your art store, and you can, you can carve both sides. If you don't gouge it too much, you can carve both sides and come up with two separate stamps. If you're going to be using it in your art journal with paint, um, you don't have to worry about it. It's fine if you, when you use both sides. So what I suggest for, free, for beginners, there's a speedball... Um, starter kit that you can get comes with this little booklet um, with some hints it comes with the regular tool it just has the one tip you also get a full block of, of pink rubber um, as you can see here it's it's, it's pretty big um, the starter one that you get if if you think that you're you're gonna like this and and want to get into it a little bit more there's a couple of other um, tools you can get. There's this speedball one where the tips are mo removable and it comes with a couple different um, different tips. It's kind of an intermediate. I wouldn't really suggest getting this one because I think it's going to wear out eventually. It's just a dowel in there and I think you, eventually it'll wear out. So if you really um, think you're going to enjoy uh, carving stamps, I suggest getting the fancier one. Um, this one has tips on the inside. Different different size tips, um, an exacto blade, small, big, round, so that you can carve um, whatever you like. And it's really easy. It's a metal casing for it to come in and out. So it's not going to, um, it's not going to fall apart very easily. Um, I also suggest you can buy different rubber um, at your art store. So be on the lookout for different type of printing um, blocks, I guess you could call them. This one's a little bit softer of a rubber than, than the Speedball, um, but still still very useful um, for what for what you want, you, what you may want to do. Obviously I wouldn't be able to carve very fine images with this, it's too soft and too pliable, but it will be it will be good for for just your basic carving. And it was only six dollars for this huge, you know, eight and a half by eleven sheet, rather than the more expensive Speedball type. So there's a couple of ways to put images down onto your rubber um, before you carve. Uh, one thing you can that I don't have a sample of, you can print a picture, print words, whatever you want out of your regular printer, and flip it over, and you can burnish it onto the back of the rubber, and it'll show up. And then you just carve around it. Um, I've done that. I've carved a picture of myself um, to use as my, my kind of signature stamp. Uh, you can also freehand it with a pencil. Just, you know, if you want to do swirls like me, you can absolutely carve. You know, it would you would want it to be thicker than that, probably. But you can actually just draw, um, or you can cut out different things. So this is a grunge board, sorry, a chipboard piece from a Tim Holtz um, gears die. Thanks to Arlene for for sending it to me. And all I did was was carve, or sorry, trace around it, and I got onto this this piece. So you've seen, you can see that I carved a little bit already um, out of this. One tip, um, the most important thing I think in carving stamps, I hold it like a pencil. Um, some people hold it like this. I shake, so I don't really, I don't find it comfortable. I find it comfortable holding it like a pencil. But what's really important is that you keep 
your tool down. You don't want to, to hold it like a pen and gouge it because this is going to end up, you know, you'll see it works, but it's going to drag and you'll end up gouging your, your rubber too deep. So what you want to do is hold it so that this, this flat edge is parallel to the, to the rubber and, and move it like that. Another good tip is to move the rubber rather than your tool whenever possible. Um, especially if you're doing circles. But what you want to do is to start at a corner and just move your tool and it slides really easily. You can see that it's, it's, uh, it's really quick. It's something so relaxed. I find it so relaxing to do. I always do the outside edges first and then start taking off um, taking out what's on the inside, but really play around with it, see what's more comfortable for you and what works. Um, if you go over a little bit too much, that's fine. You know, this it's very forgiving. Some people do such amazing work, but I would suggest you start with some, some pretty graphic basic images uh, at first. This is one I was starting to cut out on the gray rubber. As you can see, I wanted, I did the entire circle um, around the gear first, and then what you can do, because when I start in on it now, there's somewhere to, there's somewhere to start. So I'm just taking off little by little um, those parts of the rubber. Now this is very soft, this gray rubber, so it's harder to, it's harder to manipulate in, in my opinion. Um, but play around with with what you like. One thing. Um, you don't have to carve out like I did here, carve all the separate um, pieces around it. You can just cut with an X-Acto knife around there like I did with this one. Um, you don't have to spend the time in carving out every single piece. You just cut it out because, um, you know, you're going to use it like that anyways. Ink's not going to go here. One one good tip if you're carving and you think that, hey, I'm, I'm done, um, it's going to look good, ink it up ink it up real quick, stamp it down, and you'll be able to see where you haven't carved yet. Um, and that's, you know, you'll, you'll see some of these, see the, how there's ink on the, that little piece, um, those little pieces up there. So you'll be able to see where, you know, maybe somewhere where you got to touch up a little bit. But very easy, very fun. Like I said, just make sure your, your tool is as parallel as possible to your image. And, uh, and go nuts. For some of the smaller ones that I did, like the Eiffel Tower, um, obviously I had to have a very small, a very thin V, thin blade to do those little, those little guys. But use, use erasers. This ends up being very hard. These are dollar store erasers. But I stamp a lot with either black or paint, um, and they hold up really well. One cool thing is we all have stencils. Um, one thing that you need to remember, if you're going to do a word, you got to do it from right to left, and you got to have the letters backwards, um, which I had to learn the hard way. So, you know, take, you can take a stencil, cut it out. You might want to use one that has, you know, bigger letters than this. You can also print, um, print it off your Cricut, print it off your printer, and and draw your own words. You can freehand it, like I did with with this B and and this do. But so simple, um, so fun, guys. You can create.